Do you ever look around at people who are doing the things that you really want to do and compare your progress with theirs? No? Am I the only one who does that? I don't think that I am. But if I could go back in time and share one message with my younger self, it would be this. All great things have humble beginnings that people on the outside rarely see. Do not be afraid to start small. I'm sure a few of you listening needed to hear this reminder too. So today we're going to talk about what the first small steps might look like to create your next big idea or dream. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for hanging out today. I am going to keep this one short and sweet, but it really hit me earlier this week when I was looking back at some of the ways that all of this, everything that people see now as powerhouse women, some of the really, really small and very humble beginnings to what people see now really looked like. Because I know what it's like, and I spent so many years feeling just overwhelmed looking at the big picture of what I ultimately wanted to do or looking up to others who were creating awesome things and I could not see at all how where I was could one day end up like where they were. And the truth is that most ideas, most of the best businesses that you see, they started really small. I mean, how many stories are there of entrepreneurs starting businesses in their garage? Um, luckily, this one didn't start in my garage. It started like in my house. So I guess that's, we have a leg up from the garage businesses. But most ideas start small and they start with people who are just willing to take action and continue taking action, this is key, when no one else is paying attention and they put in work that no one else will get to see. So if you're in a phase right now where you're doing that kind of work, working behind the scenes tirelessly and and no one's really seeing, it seems like no one's paying attention, I just really want this episode to encourage you that the best ideas start really, really small. And I wish, I'm almost going to share from the standpoint of where we are now, looking back at the girl who felt restless, you know, six, seven years ago and was really afraid to go all in. I was, you know, that was the point in my life. I was playing at 60 to 70% of my potential, really kind of just afraid, afraid to go all in, afraid to really think big and play big. And I think because I was looking for more of that immediate gratification. But the truth is, you know, one day when I got sick of that and I decided to go all in, you know, you can hear the full story of the birth of powerhouse women on episode one, but it really took me deciding to do something that I had no, no business doing. And it, it took me just getting to a point where I decided to stop waiting until I felt ready. And if there is a secret to success, I think that's it. You know, number one, just don't wait until we feel ready to take that next step and to understand that the the first step might be kind of small. You might show up before anyone is watching or listening. Um, so when I think about like how this looked for me, if you're brand new to Powerhouse Women or relatively new around here, I just want to give you some perspective of really how small all of this started. So it all started with the book, Powerhouse Woman. Like I said, you can hear the whole story of of that on episode one. But what most people don't know is before I wrote a book for three years, three years, I had a blog. It was a health and fitness blog. It was called Love Lindsay. It had a lot of pink and purple <laughs> which is so funny to think back on now. I like pink and purple, but just not really my same vibe. But I had this blog and I remember being so afraid to put something out there. I put out one article per year, literally. I had three articles on this blog. And so wait, I had the blog for three years and it had three articles. That's what I'm trying to say. 
And, you know, just think about like, wow, how much more comfortable could I have gotten with writing if I would had been willing to put writing out there that wasn't perfect or, you know, be willing to put myself out there even if, you know, no one was reading those blogs. But instead I was so afraid and little did I know that small start would eventually lead to writing a book. But I think I could have probably sped up that learning curve a little bit, if you know what I mean, by just being willing to put more out there faster. Before I had, you know, a a successful business, one that is going to, you know, generate multiple six figures in revenue next, you know, within the next 18 months, I had worked my butt off building a network marketing business. Network marketing is like the best entrepreneur school um, at at the time of this recording, I'm trying to think. So in a, like early next year, it'll actually be 10 years since I started that business. And that was really my, my training ground when it came to sales and marketing, entrepreneurship, networking. I remember being so scared in the beginning. I, I remember shaking when I went to my first networking meeting and I had to stand up for like 60 seconds and say who I was. And now, you know, I I stand on a stage and I can speak to people. I can speak to rooms of, you know, hundreds of people and not, of course, I still feel nervous, but not shake like a leaf. And here in this networking meeting, I remember just like almost blacking out. I was so nervous to stand up and even just share who I was in front of 12 people. So, you know, just a couple of the ways like this all has started really, really small. I remember before having you know, a a live event. Our last live event had 300 women. It was so cool. I mean, there were women who flew in from all over the country, even some internationally. And I can still remember before I ever hosted live events of, you know, hundreds of people, I spent two years hosting something that I called Ladies Who Lunch. And I would just literally rent out a room at a restaurant and I would invite women. I put out like a Facebook invite. Some of you maybe can remember coming, but it would be for maybe five, 10 women. And we would just have lunch together. We would each kind of share who we were and what we were working on and get to know one another. I even remember one time, it's like so embarrassing. I rented the room. I didn't have to pay, thank goodness, but I rented the room. And I show up and the waiter came in. He like brought me water. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, they'll all be here soon. No one showed. No one came. And I literally like felt so bad and like embarrassed that I was like, I'll still order lunch. It's fine. Probably went home and cried. But, you know, I kept showing up month after month and hosting these luncheons, whether two people came or 20 or zero. But it was just one time zero people came, but it's still pretty funny. And even just before I spoke at events or had my own, I took out the trash at so many other people's events. I volunteered. I was part of the team. And I don't say any of this so that you think I'm awesome because I'm just like, I'm literally just like you. I want you to see that if you're currently at the stage where you're hosting a small gathering where you are doing those things in the beginning stages, you're starting to write or put out content, you're starting to make videos and it feels like no one is paying attention, feels like no one is listening, that all it takes is to stay consistent with the small things long enough to to start getting some some traction and I think the consistency piece is the final one so when I think back to you know yes ever, all things start small but like I shared with that blog what if, what if I had been more consistent what if I had just been willing to be uncomfortable and do it scared and been even just been willing to be bad until I got better maybe all of this could have even started sooner so wherever you're at on the journey whether it's hosting your first event, publishing your first blog, taking the leap to start your business, I just want you to remember that the key to success is this. I guess if there is a key, if there's a secret to success, here's what I think it is. (laughs) Take this as a, you know, take my advice for what it is. It's one person's advice. But I think the key to success is just to do it afraid, to be willing to start small, and believe that epic things can come from humble beginnings. So whatever stage you're in, if you're in the humble beginning stage or not, wherever you're at along the journey, remember too that you're really not meant to do any of this alone. That you've got this, 
You totally have got this and we've got you. So whether you're brand new to Powerhouse Women or you've been around for a while, you know that our motto is we're not meant to do this alone and we really mean it. So the best place to start getting connected and and really find that community who's going to support you along the way and who's going to cheer you on until you get to the stage where you feel like you can now impart some wisdom and you can share with women who are coming up behind you and and say like, gosh, I, I've been where you've been. I know exactly what's lying ahead. Let's just get you moving in the right direction and be willing to start small because that is where all of the, all of the things that we currently look up to all the best businesses, the best ideas, they all started that way. So I want to know, and we'll start this conversation in right in the Facebook community. What does starting small look like for you? Maybe it's the next business you're launching. Maybe you're currently in this season. Or maybe you just, like me, are kind of reflecting back on you've created something cool, but you can remember not that long ago it being a really small and humble beginning. So I want to know, what does starting small look like for you? And more importantly, what small action step? So this is where we get it like on the court in your life, where this actually starts to make a difference for you. So what small action step are you going to take toward your bigger dream this week? Plug into the Facebook group and let us know. And I can't wait to connect with you.